today I'm gonna discuss with you a topic of quadrilaterals. I'm gonna discuss with you the topic of quadrilaterals. But I'm not gonna make it too boring for you just by telling you, okay, so a quadrilateral is a four sided figure, uh, a square is a quadrilateral, a rectangle is a quadrilateral, other types of quadrilaterals are pa a parallelogram, a rhombus, a trapezium, a trapezoid, a kite. Or, or I'm not gonna uh, say, say something like the area of a quadrilateral is, um, uh, depends, like, I'm not gonna say, say, say something like the area of a square is side times the side, the area of a rectangle is length times its breadth, the area of a parallelogram is the base times its height, uh, the area of the rhombus is also its base times its height, or, or the, I'm not, I'm not gonna do anything like that. What I'm gonna tell you is how to find the area of strange quadrilaterals. So there's a specific type of quadrilaterals. Actually, they are called strange quadrilaterals, and they can be these these quadrilaterals can be in any shape, except that they are four sided, of course. Even this is a quadrilateral. If I will just erase this much portion. Even this looks like a quadrilateral. Though it looks like to me uh, a trapezium. So we'll edit its shape. So we'll increase this length right here. There you go. So it could be in any shape. It could go. Try to draw the various of all shapes. It looks again like a trapezium. Okay. Okay, something like that. So it could be in any shape. And what I'm going to tell you is how to find the area of these figures. Right, it's quite interesting. Perhaps. To know how to find the area of these figures. So let's move on to the case one. The easiest case. So I'm going to tell you about case one in this video. In the next video, I'll see you with case two followed by case three. So case one is pretty easy. It's the easiest of all three cases. Let's say mm, that I'll just take a quadrilateral. So let's see, say that this is a quadrilateral. Now, uh, these are sides with irregular measures. And I, in the first case, I do not know the length of the sides. Uh, second, neither do I know the measure of the angles. So this is unknown to me. Rather, rather, rather I should say that. Mm, oops, it took just just to a bit. Yeah. So I should say that. This is unknown to me. This is unknown to me. This is unknown to me. And this is unknown to me. So is this unknown to me. This unknown to me. This unknown to me. And this unknown to me. So what is known to me? That's the question. Well, the thing that is known to me is either of the diagonals. So I'll tell you in both cases, let's start with the di this diagonal. 
So if this diagonal is given to me in case 1, with this I'll have the corresponding height to it through this vertex. Height 1. And I'll have the corresponding height through this vertex. Height 2. But neither of them are a part of the diagonals. Right, I'll just draw the 90 degrees symbol. Yes. So, the concept behind finding the area of any quadrilateral is that you divide it into two triangles and then you find the area of the triangles. You divide it into two or more, right? So, uh, clearly in this case, we have it already divided into two triangles. You can see this is the first triangle. And this is the second triangle. Right, so I'll take out the area first of the first triangle and then of the second triangle. So first triangle, second triangle. So in the first triangle, the area is equal to the base times the height divided by 2. Or I should write this as the diagonal 1 times height 1 divided by 2 that's done for the first one for the second triangle I again go and look for its area its area is clearly again base times the height divided by 2 which is diagonal 1 times height 2 divided by 2. Now, the area of this complete quadrilateral is the area of the first triangle added to the area of the second triangle. So, the area of the first triangle is D1 H1 over 2 plus. Now, the area of the second triangle is D1 h2 over 2 now clearly i can see the d1 popping out i can just factor it out so i go d1 h1 over 2 plus h2 over 2 now i can clearly see this 2 in both places i can take it as the common denominator and i can write it as very poor at right arrows I must say okay so I can write it as d1 times h1 plus h2 over 2 and this is it this is the area of the quadrilateral this was the first case now sometimes it will not be written like this sometimes it may be written as so an, an alternative form is you go d1 over 2, you factor out this 2 from these two places, or you take this 2 over here, and then you just multiply it by h1 plus h2. That's the way people write it, but it's the same thing. Some people write h1 plus h2 in braces, and some people write h1 plus h2 upon 2 in parentheses. That's just the same thing, right? Now, it's I... Uh, yeah, that's my reminder. <laughs> now, I explained it to you. Uh, using uh, these two triangles using diagonal 1 now if I change my figure and I take diagonal 2 so instead of diagonal 1 I'll use diagonal 2 so I'll just erase all this stuff There you go. I can even erase the diagonal. Aha. Perfect. Now, I'll draw. Oopsies. I'll draw. This is diagonal 2. This is height 3. And this is, whoa, 
height four. And just so you know, I'll just color the diagonal, color the diagonal in a different color because you might get confused. This is the second diagonal. Diagonal two. Now again, now I'll take this as triangle one and this as triangle two. Remember, this complete thing is a tr is part of the triangle one, and this complete is the part of triangle two. Now, I'll just remove this stuff of case one in what all is there in case one or not, because the, that's the only way I'll get to explain this to you properly. All right, or I'll just yeah, what I can do is I'll select this figure. And I'll copy it. I've copied it, and now I'll just clear this entire thing. And I'll paste my figure. So there it is. There you go. That's my figure. And I'll just erase the detail not needed. Or actually, yes, it is needed. So there you go and now this was the area which we got in our first case right now let's see the area which we get in our second case this is I mean case one this was using the diagonal one and height one and two now we're gonna use diagonal two and height three and four so again in triangle one or I should write triangle three because that's triangle one and two are being used and this as triangle four there you go. so in triangle three the area is equal to its base times its height divided by two which is equal to d4 uh, i mean d2 h3 over two in case of the fourth triangle the area is Again, it's base times its height divided by 2, which is equal to D2, H4 upon 2. Right. Now, the area of this quadrilateral is equal to the uh, area of the tri third triangle added to the area of the fourth triangle. So, which is, the area is 3 plus 4. So, the area of the third is d2 h3 over 2 plus d2 h4 over 2 now when you add this you can factor out the d2 and then you get h3 plus h4 over 2 and then you get the same exact result sorry yeah, height 1 plus height 2, height 3 plus height 4. That was it. See you in the next video, the second and the third case. In the second case, followed by the third case.